All right, welcome back to the this utility AI in Unity tutorial series. Um, in the previous part, we talked about uh, we we went in and constructed all these uh, core scripts for our prototype utility AI: the action class, the AI brain, the consideration class, the move controller, and the NPC controller. In this part, we will be diving into the action class and uh, filling in the details behind the scoring logic of uh, actions, okay? So specifically, these two methods here, decide best action and score action, okay? And I went ahead and uh, kind of just wrote out the layman English terms of what these actions are doing, okay? So this decide best action here, uh, what basically what it's going to do is that it's going to loop through all the available actions that we give the NPC, and then it's going to pluck out the best or highest scoring action um, from, from this list, okay? So this method is gonna be fairly straightforward. It's just gonna be a, a typical, you know, search through this list and give me the highest number type, type of algorithm, okay? And for this method here, the score action, this is actually the, the more interesting one here, where um, you actually go through the, we're going to go through the logic of how do you score an individual action based on its list of considerations. And here I, I kind of wrote up the description, the layman English uh, description of what we're going to be doing the, uh, for the logic. Basically, you just loop through all the considerations of this action that you give it and then it's going to score each consideration and then it's going to go ahead and average all of those consideration scores and the that average score you get for those considerations is your overall action score okay and uh, an important thing to note is that when i say average the consideration scores it doesn't actually literally mean that we're going to you know just add up the score and the sc consideration scores and then divide by the number of considerations we have it's actually a little bit more involved than that the term average here is just more like we're going to somehow aggregate these scores to give us an overall action score okay so let's go ahead and first uh um code out this score action one because it's the more interesting one here okay so um if we're going to be looping through the considerations and keep track of an overall score then we're going to need a variable that keeps tracks of that overall score and we'll just call it score okay and remember uh in the previous video how i mentioned scores all, always uh are always between zero and one okay so we're just going to go ahead and set initial value of one here um Yes, initial value of one, okay? And then for our first, uh, as, as, as mentioned in this description here, we're gonna loop the, through the considerations. So let's go ahead and do it in a simple for loop here, starting from the first index and like, looping through all the index of the considerations list. Okay. And um, just now that we're looping through the list, we're going to have to look at each individual uh, consideration. So let's go ahead and create another variable that keeps track of the individual consideration score. Okay. And to do that, right, so consideration score, we get that from calling this score consideration method that we created for the consideration class. If you look back to the consideration class, you can see here, right, we said that the, the abstract class of consideration, anything that inherits from this abstract class of consideration will also have a score consideration method that, um, you know, contains some kind of logic that actually scores the consideration of how important it is or um, how much, how much, uh, how much that factor influences the importance of the action it's associated with. Okay. In the next video, we'll actually dive into the individual logic of these consideration score consideration methods. Um, but in this video, we're just uh, uh, we're just filling in the details of these two methods here that simply call the score consideration method here. Okay. So by calling the score consideration method, we get a consideration a score for the consideration uh, we're currently on, and then we're going to um, kind of uh, accumulate that individual score into the overall score okay and you'll see why we do that um, at, 
So we accumulate, so we, we get that consideration score by calling this method, and then we just lump it into the overall score for now. And then later on, we'll take that lumped overall score and we'll do some um, averaging scheme to it so that we get um, a reasonable uh, score that represents the action's urgency, okay? So we lump it into the, the overall score now. And we're going to go ahead and do a, a simple uh, logic here that stops the calculations if the score is already zero, right? Because if you if you keep multiplying all these actions, then all of a sudden these consideration scores, and suddenly you find a consideration where the score is zero, then that automatically means that the action basically has no urgency, right? Um, so if the sco overall score of the considerations looked at so far is zero, then we can just basically stop uh, the calculations. There's no point in um, doing more computations because we know that anything multiplied by zero will always be zero, which means that action has a score of zero. Okay, then, so if the score is zero, we're going to go ahead and store that score into the action. Okay, and then we're just going to return it. Action.score. And we'll just make a note here. No point computing further. Okay. And we have a red squeak line here because score action is actually supposed to return um, a float. Okay. All right. So this logic here takes care of the situation where the, if the score is zero, then we don't need to further compute. All right. So that basically, this, this chunk right here takes care of lumping all these scores together as it loops through the considerations. Now, what do we do when we have that lumped score? Um, this for loop here does all the lumping, lumps all the consideration scores into one score. Now we actually do the averaging scheme here, okay, of overall score. Okay, and this scheme here was actually devised by Dave Mark. Um, he's the pioneer, kind of the pioneer of uh, utility AI for video games. Um, in I think his first GDC video uh, introducing utility AI into video games was like in 2010, around that time period. Um, and since then, uh, for some reason, it didn't really catch on. Um, and I think it's because it's a little bit complicated, as I mentioned in my very, very first video. Uh, but we're actually gonna, I'm gonna actually show you how he does it. Um, it's the, the details of this is actually, uh, explained in his book, uh, Mathematic Be Behavioral Mathematics for Game AI. And I will link a, um, I'm going to put a link to that book in the description if you're interested in diving deeper into utility AI. That book is an excellent source. Okay. So this is the scheme that he came up with. Okay. So first, uh, we're going to take this uh, overall score and we're going to kind of, um, we're going to kind of uh, rescale it. And why do we need to rescale it? Because if you notice here, we lumped the score by multiplying all the scores together. So if you, you know, if in a sense, all these consideration scores are between zero and one, you're basically multiplying decimals together. And what happens when you multiply decimals together? They get smaller and smaller, right? 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 becomes 0 0.25. 0 0.25 multiplies by 0 0.5 becomes 0.125. So the more considerations you tack on onto this action, the smaller this overall score is going to be as you lump them together. So if you have a lot of considerations for an individual action, this score is going to be this just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, and so to mitigate this issue, Dave Mark and his friend came up with this averaging scheme uh, here to basically rescale it. Once you lump it all together, you basically rescale it to a reasonable um number that's still between zero and one it still maintains the same meaning um, it's just rescaled to be a more reasonable number so that uh, it mitigates this um issue that of the score becoming really small due to the multiplication of decimals that and that's what this averaging scheme is for okay so float we're just going to store the original score into this variable here and then we're going to apply a modification factor okay we'll just call it mod factor uh, and that mod factor is uh, determined by this little formula here. Okay. 
And uh, to be honest, I don't really understand why this works. It just does based on, uh, according to Dave Mark and his friend. And uh, I haven't actually taken, taken the time to dive into why it works, but it just works and we're going to roll with it because the key point is of this tutorial series is to get a prototype utility AI. Okay. And we're going to use this averaging scheme by Dave Mark. So first we, we cache the score into an original score met, uh, variable, and then we compute a mo modification factor. All right. And then we're going to use that modification factor to determine what's called a makeup value. Makeup value one minus the original score times the mod factor. And then finally, we're going to rescale this. The, the action score is going to be equal to the original score plus the makeup value times the original score. Okay. So this is the averaging scheme that I was talking about earlier. It's not literally you're taking the score, adding them up, dividing by the number of considerations you had. It's um, averaging scheme that um, takes this lumped score and rescales it to a reasonable value uh, that mitigates the issue of decimals being multiplied by each other to give a really small score. Now by doing this, original score plus make a value times the original score, we arrive at a score that is still between zero and one, maintains the same uh, uh, meaning behind it, right? Um, and it's a reasonable uh, score. Okay, and so now that we have the action score, we all we do is just return this action score like that. Okay, and you will see this in action, right? Um, in the next, in the later videos, uh, I will actually put debugging messages here so that we can actually see these scores get printed out and you can see them, that, that they're reasonable. Um, they come out to be reasonable values because of this uh, rescaling scheme here. Okay. All right. So that takes care of the score action method here. Uh, that should be good enough for now. Let's go ahead and flesh out this decide best action here. This is just a simple algorithm that says look through the list of available actions and pick out the highest scoring action. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to take an overall score and we're going to keep track of um, the index of the best action. Okay. For the int I zero. Okay. Uh, so we're just looping through all the actions in the actions available list for the NPCs. And we're going to say if uh, if we score the action, right, if we score the action, oops, and it comes out to be greater than our previous score, then we know that this is a candidate for the next best action. So we're going to set it equal to we're going to uh, store the next best action index and then we'll set the score equal to actions available dot score all right and then that's it to find the next best action right it's going to loop through all the individual actions um, it's going to score them and then it's going to compare the score to the previous score right the previous score here is 0 and if it's if it's greater than the previous score, then we know that it's already scored higher than the last uh, score action score. That means that we store the index of that next best action in this list, and then we store the score of that this action that we just scored. Okay, lots of scoring scoring going on around here. Um, okay, uh, and then by the end of this for loop, uh, the logic is the algorithm basically finds the best score. Um, and the best scoring action. All right. So that for loop takes care of uh, plucking out the best scoring action. Now we actually have to set uh, 
this variable here, right? This field here. We, we have a field here for best action. We have to actually set it. So we'll call that in. best action is equal to actions available. Next best action index. And that is that, right? It's very simple, um, simple algorithm. Well, maybe simple to me and people who have experience, but uh, kind of went through the idea behind it. So people who um, are not familiar with algorithms yet uh, kind of understand what's going on here. But that should take care of these two methods here. We have a decide best action that plucks out the best action from this list. And then we have an individual score action that actually scores the individual action here. Um, and then uses like this uh, averaging scheme to get us a reasonable score. Um, and I, this is honestly what all that I wanted to cover in this uh, video. It's a shorter video, but this is a good stopping point because um, if we actually dive into scoring consideration, this actually gets uh, a little bit more it will, because in, as I mentioned in the previous video, right, every consideration is scored differently. So it just felt right to stop here. And in the next video, I will actually go into detail about um, how we can code the logic for individual considerations that have different logic for these score considerations. Okay. So this video is a little bit short, just fleshing out these two important methods here. This, this will allow us to, this takes care of pretty much all the logic that goes into the AI brain, okay? So in the next video, what we will actually be doing is creating concrete actions and concrete considerations. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have an action for eat, for sleep, and for working, and then we'll also flesh out what those considerations are and the logic that goes behind those consideration, scoring considerations, okay? Um, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and I hope to see you in the next one.